Hey all, I want to talk about an exciting new feature inside of ClickUp 3.0, which is conditional logic in form. If you're a marketing agency or an internal marketing team, and you get a lot of resource requests from a variety of different departments or members of your organization, and you want a good way to consolidate all of that into one place so that you have one form and then one central location where all those requests go, this is the video for you. I want to take you step by step to how you can build this form out and also build the conditional logic into the form to make sure you gather all of the information that you need. So let's jump into this form and how you can actually build this out. First of all, if you've never used a form before, just note that forms live inside of ClickUp lists. They are essentially a view in that specific list. So if you come here, we'll see I have the option to create a form down here. You need to click on that and add the form just like that. In a form, what it does is it creates a task on the list that it's built on. So this work request form is essentially when someone fills this out and submits it, it's going to create a task on this list. So as you can see, I have some uh, examples right here of people who have filled out. So Jim Halpert filled out the recreate sales pitch deck. That's something I need to do. That's from a form submission that he submitted using this work request form. And all of these uh, are going to be task fields and custom fields that I'm using to then generate details onto that task. So let's actually go into editing this and how we can build conditional logic into this. So if I come here, I have my title of this work or resource request form. I have my um, sort of description of what this form is. If they have any questions, they can send me an email. And now I need the main details of what I need to actually get this resource request. So first off, I have my task name. And this is enter a brief name for your request. That's just sort of the basics of what I need. Please give me a, a one to five word sort of description of what this is, and then a more detailed description, which is going to go into the task description. So these are the two that I would say, at minimum, these are necessary for this form. If you don't want these um, removed from this form like that, it's just going to pull it over here. So if I give you an example, start date, again, I can edit that text. If I didn't need this anymore, remove from this form, and then I can easily drag it back if that was a mistake. Can also make things required or not required as well. So we have our name, we have our description for the request. And now big thing to start thinking about is who is actually requesting this. So either A, if this form is for your uh, workspace or those that have a, a ClickUp account um, and are in your ClickUp workspace, this can be a people custom field because this allows them to just select themselves. Otherwise, this will need to be a drop down, a text or an email field because this is for others that are outside of your ClickUp workspace. Again, if you're an internal marketing team and maybe this is going out to your HR department that's not in ClickUp or your sales team that's not in ClickUp, this is a way that they can select themselves so that you know who you actually need to get in touch with about this resource request. So if there's any sort of follow-up activities or you just need to send them the final product of what they're requesting, you need to know who submitted this and this is how you're going to do that. So you see over here, I use the drop down again. A drop down will work best if you're sending this to maybe 15, 20, 30, maybe max 40 people in here. Um, that way they don't have to go through a massive list. But say Toby Flunderson is submitting this, he can easily select himself. Otherwise, you just use a text or an email custom field. Both will work fine. Um, but with this, the advantage is if I create a view here with all the tasks coming in, I can see who submitted all these. So Michael Scott submitted to create a commercial gym with a sales pitch deck, fire guy with a card stock description on the website, Toby with the post new salesperson role on the website. I can easily uh, batch and group those together and make a nice view for myself. So back here, that's the first one we're going to want to do is just going to be the who is requesting this. The next one to also further kind of segment and, and batch that work together um, in that view could be what department is this request for? So in this case, it might just be HR, sales, product, whoever you've sent this form to, just kind of a way to consolidate that and, and help just kind of organize the work once it actually gets submitted. So I can say, Toby, he's a part of the HR department. Again, that's just another drop down that I've created in this list uh, for this, this form. After that's when we actually get into the big details that we're going to need to start building in this conditional logic. So I come down here and I see request type. And so request type is where you really need to start thinking about the different forms that you might have already created or just the kind of different types of requests that come in. So maybe you need specific details for a rate of request, a web request, social, or maybe just a general feedback form. Start to think about those and start to think about 
okay, if it's creative form, what do we need? Do we need photography maybe that they typically should include? And right now we're having to chase them down via email to, to get that photography. Maybe we need them from here to say what client this is for. Be thinking about those if then statements. So if it's creative, then we need additional um, context into this. Start to think about those options so you can start to build it into your conditional logic here. But as you'll see here, if I go back to my viewing mode, I have a couple of different options. I have creative, web, feedback, and social. Those are my main creative or my main request types. If I select creative, you'll see nothing new pops up. If I select web, nothing new pops up, but I want something new to pop up. If I go back to editing, we'll see down here, I have the option to turn on logic. So I can click here and now you'll see my rules start to pop up. And now I'm able to create these if then statements. So if the response is, is not, is set, is not set, I want to choose is creative, then do this. I also have the option to add different conditions. I'll go over that in a second. Right now, what I want to do is if the response is creative, I want to add a field to say, please supply some creative files. Maybe this is photography, whatever it may be. This is something that I need to actually do this. I don't want to chase you down via email. So just give it to me right off the bat. So I can come here, click the pencil. Instead of it just saying creative files, I say, please supply necessary files for this request. Just like that. And I can either make this required or not required. I'm going to make this required. Now, once I've created that, you'll see if I come back here, request type is creative. That's going to drop that down here. So now I have more fields that they need to fill out based off of them selecting creative. Go back here now and we'll see, hold down our rules. And now the option two, if I have an additional field for that creative request, I can also add it here. So maybe it's a video overview. Um, a client, whatever it may be, I can add additional details to this form to say, if you do creative, then show this field, this field, this field, however many you want, you have the option to do that to make it a very robust and um, great form for your team. In addition, what I can do here is I can also add another rule to say, okay, if the response is social or feedback, let's do feedback, I can add a field to say video overview. Let's say we want, please include a video of your feedback. So it makes it super easy to say, hey, now if I come over here, let's say it's creative, I'll get that. But let's say it's feedback, I'm going to get that. So you'll see just drop down. And if it's web, nothing's going to show up because I don't have any logic in there built yet. So after that, after you get sort of every different resource request, you get all your rules built out. The other thing that I can do is add in additional conditions. So let's say maybe there's a specific thing I want the HR department when they submit a creative request, I want them to do this. So I can come over here and now I say, which department is requesting this? Maybe it's HR. So now if they want to actually view that information, it's going to be who's requesting this. If it's Toby, if it's HR and it's creative, then they'll see that. But if it's not HR, it's sales, they won't see that. So now I have sort of two ifs to then have that then. But if I go back, I don't need that. I can get rid of it just like that. I can also do and or or if I wanted to. But let's say if you have multiple different options, I can also add more conditions. So you can make these very robust, very complex if you need to have that very specific uh, things and different fields uh, for those outputs. But let's say I don't need that and I don't need that. The one thing to note with this, as you can see, if I add that condition in, I'm not able to add in the how urgent is this request. I can only add in request type. I can only add in the department and who is requesting this because this how urgent is the request is below this field right here. So you need to think about the order in your forms because the order is going to matter. If I were to move this request type above these two fields, then I would not be able to use those in my conditional logic. I can only use what's above it because we're sensing that they've already filled this out so that's going to help me actually use that for this um, conditional logic here. So just take note of that. You need to make sure you have an order set for your form if you want to build multiple different things together to actually build into that logic. So after that, let's say we're good with that. We just need uh, specific things for our creative requests. We need to add those creative files as well as feedback. We need that video overview. We need to require that right there. But if not, then we're good to go. What you can also do is how urgent is this request? So if we wanted to, to say some logic in here, if the request is urgent, then I could do add a field just like this. 
and that could be desired deadline. Please include a desired deadline for your urgent request. So when we're done, uh, we're good to go here. If I wanted to edit the response, I could. I can also add a redirect URL if I wanted to, which is a great option if you have a place that you want them to go to. But for now, we'll go into viewing. And I'm going to come over here and let's say I've enter brief name for your request. Um, I'm just going to do update sales pitch deck. Let's say description. Here's your description. Who is requesting this? Let's say that this one is Stanley Hudson. Which department is this for? This is for sales. Create a request. This is creative. And we need to submit some creative here. Um, let's just to bypass that, let's just say it's for social. How urgent is this request? Urgent. Now I need to give them a date. Let's say it's going to be due uh, 26. This is very urgent. Now I can submit. There we go. We have our thank you message. And you'll now see that this is going to load on here. So we have Stanley. He's got his request. He needs us to update the pitch deck. We'll see all the information that he's put is going to show up right here. So here's your description. Thanks, Stanley. That's not very helpful. Who is requesting this? Stanley. We have, which is part of this for sales, request type, social, please include desired deadline. And those are also going to show up as the details down here with our custom fields. And there's your step-by-step -step tutorial on conditional logic in forms. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. But if not, I'll see you next time. Stay productive, my friends. This is Jeff signing off. Thanks.